Hello. My activity for the day is I have to put all green things inside this box. Done. Oh, I think I left out something. You know why did this mistake happen? Problem in attention. If I was being a bit more organized and systematic, it will be easier for me to pay attention. So it's simply like, okay, this goes, this goes, this one, this one, and that's it. I have this whole array of plant-like things. So for example, I'm given an instruction that I'm supposed to find only the ones that look like a palm tree so i'm going to search for them and i'm not told exactly how many of these are there so when you're going to start this activity with your child you can initially say okay there are five of these can you find it this is your first one and then the child can look for second third fourth and fifth so you know my task is complete then to make it more complicated what you can do is ask your child to look for a certain tree like this and you don't tell them how many are they the same kind of task can be practiced using time so a timer is placed and so that you can also work on the skill of the child or the accuracy of the child a similar kind of activity can be practiced in which the child has to go in a certain array which will also help them in reading skills. So for example, they have to start from top to go from top to bottom and then move from left to right in each line, just like reading. So you make them practice in reading so that their focus improves by turning it into a fun activity. Can you find all these sort of road signs? And then they keep looking in a particular order. Okay, I found one. I found the second one. That's it. For further focus, you can work on a particular skill in which you align them, maybe one up, one down. Like this, you make a certain pattern and ask the child to replicate it. So this also requires attention. So one is straight, one is upside down, then straight, then upside down. So in this way, you can keep changing the pattern so that the child knows whether they did attend to the detail or not even though it is more of a memory area in which you just show the pattern and then remove it and the child has to make it from memory initially when the child is supposed to start reading you can actually hand them over a pencil or even they can use their finger to try to trace and follow the line while reading so rather than making them do school books it's better to start with some favorite story books and after that you can simply ask them to keep your, their hand so that they know the left side orientation and they can follow it and later on they don't know, want anything and they can simply read. Once there was a little red hen which lived alone in the woods. If a child has to try to find difference between pictures, that also requires a lot of attention. So we have these two boxes over here. Let's try to find the difference. So you can ask the child what is different about them. The fact that one is green and one is yellow. The fact that one of them has a lemon on it like a shadow, the other one has a pear. But there are also similarities over there like both of them are essentially boxes and both of them are in a rectangular shape. So like this similarities and differences also call for attention to detail. I really like this game known as what changed. You know what changed means? For example, initially you show the child a circle. The child says it was a circle. And then you ask them to look somewhere else and the next time you color it. So the child says, oh, it's been colored blue. And then you erase it or try to make another circle. But this time you change the color or make it half red, half yellow. So you ask the child what changed and they say, now the circle is half red and half yellow. Another very interesting game is Simon Says. You know, kids love to play this in schools. It's a very common game and you can play it with your child at home. So you says, you only have to follow my command if I say Simon Says. 
So Simon says, clap your hands. Simon says, tap your head. Wiggle your fingers. Oh no, that was wrong because Simon did not ask you to wiggle your fingers. So when you, the child actually has to attend to when the parent or the teacher is saying, Simon says, and trust me, I'm again going to throw in my idea make your child do jigsaw puzzles they are a wonderful way for cognitive perceptual development of your child i just love them as an activity so whenever you are trying to work with your child talk about three specific ways do you think your child is alert first of all is not sleepy or hungry or thirsty that way you're not going to work on your child's attention you're just going to bore them second are they able to selectively attend to a task sustain it for a certain duration and finally are they also at the same time able to attend to their surroundings whenever there is a need you know whenever you are doing some work and suddenly the teacher calls out your name you actually have to look up at that time you cannot avoid or ignore that particular voice you have to listen to the teacher at the time because the teacher might be asking you to come and solve the problem on that board but when to filter it out is what visual attention is about. So let me know how much did you learn from this particular thing. Try to apply these activities for your kid at home. Let me know in the comments below how informative it was. Any other video suggestions that you might have and we'll meet again.